Welcome to the Madeleine Simulink Robotics Arena. In this video, we will be covering how to use vision sensors to program robot autonomy. By the end of this video, you will be able to understand vision sensor basics and how to calibrate sensors that are based on color threshold. You will also learn how to monitor the detections coming from your sensor and how to tune algorithms that might be using vision sensors to complete a task with your robot. Finally, we're going to be covering examples for two different common robotics applications, one of which is how to automatically grab an object when it's in the line of sight of a robot, and how to follow an object that is of a particular color. So why should we detect objects in the first place? Well, for many robotics applications, initial object locations can be constant. This means that finding objects can help you derive the robot position within its environment. For this example, we have a robot in a field with a couple of objects. In this particular example, you can see how if we know our relative distance to the red object, we will also know our absolute distance to a map feature, which in this case can be one of the walls. And the same goes for objects of different colors. It can also be useful to detect objects in order to sync or trigger tasks depending on whether or not an object is visible to the robot. Vision sensors are increasingly more popular in low-cost robotics. The type of hardware you use can range from being very hardware specific such as the VEX vision sensor or more generic such as using a webcam with a custom processing algorithm. One thing all of these vision sensors will have in common is that generally they will detect objects by color intensity. However, some devices are modified so that they can detect objects using infrared light instead. Common detection properties obtained from a vision sensor are the size of an object, the location of the object within an image, the type of object or the signature, and this will let you know maybe what color the object is, and finally, whether or not you detect one or more objects of the same or different types. In this example, we can see that we've detected a red object, which corresponds to the object label, object 1, with x and y coordinates and the corresponding width and height. Now let's take a look at an example calibration sequence for a vision sensor. Vision sensors often come with a calibration utility. You can open up the VEX vision sensor utility directly from the Simulink vision sensor block. You can see how I first place an object of a particular color in front of the sensor, and I take a picture. Then I click on the set button in order to set a region of interest, in this case of a yellow portion of the cone, and we will see that it will immediately detect all of the yellow cone. Then we can adjust the thresholds in order to make the detection more or less sensitive. After that, make sure you save your settings to your vision sensor and you can now detect objects, in this case of a yellow color, and it will output it as a result of uh, object of signature 1. In this case, signature 1 is the label corresponding to an object of yellow color. Now we will move over to monitoring and tuning parameters for your algorithms. For this, we're going to open up a Simulink model. In Simulink, We've opened the Vision Monitor and Tune example that is provided on the VEX Companion app. If you don't have the VEX Companion app yet, we will add a link to it on the description for the video. In our Simulink model, you can see that we have connected the output of the VEX Vision sensor, which corresponds to the object count, x and y coordinates, and width and height of the objects, to some Simulink displays in order to see the numerical output. We've also connected the x and y coordinates to an xy graph to visualize how the object moves around. If we double click on the vision sensor, you will see that we have connected vision sensor to smart port number five on our VEX V5 brain, and that we're only getting information from signature one, which corresponds to yellow objects according to our calibration. We've also checked the box to enable the display on the VEX V5 brain, which means that we will get a graphic on the VEX brain that is gonna draw the object in the correct location and with the correct dimensions. In order to monitor the values in real time, we will click on the monitor and tune button in Simulink while making sure that we have connected our computer to the VEX brain. In this video, you can see how we can track the object's location using the XY plot in Simulink, and also we can verify that by looking at the VEX display and the drawing in there. You can also use the Simulink displays in order to Examine the individual values, such as the width of the object as it gets closer and farther away from the sensor. Now that we can monitor the values coming from our vision sensor, we're going to move over to our first application 
which is how to get your robot to perform automatic actuation based on these detections. We're going to open up the Vision Actuation Simulating model provided in the VEX app. You will see that in this case, we're only using the X and Y components from the Vision sensor and that we're passing those through a moving average block. The moving average block is going to help us filter out some of those faulty detection and bounces coming from the Vision sensor. Then, the X and Y components of the detections are processed through a stateful chart that sets the motor position of our smart motor block in order to close or open the gripper in the row. If we look further inside the stateful chart, we will see that we have three states. An idle state, a grab state, and then a release state. The robot will be at idle until there is an object within its region of interest, which in this case corresponds to the logical comparisons that we set in this stateful transition. Then we're going to change the motor position command to zero, and we're going to wait for five seconds, and after five seconds has passed, we're going to release the object again, and we're going to wait for three seconds before we can grab the object one more time. We can now take a look at what uploading this algorithm will look like when it's running in the robot. You can see here that if I take a yellow cone and put it in front of the robot, it will grab onto it, and then it will release after a little while. However, if I pick up the cone, the robot won't actuate because it can't detect the yellow object. Once I put the cone back in front of the robot, it actuates one more time. Now that we're able to automatically actuate a robot gripper using information from our vision sensor, we're going to move over to a more complex task, which is actually following an object detected by the vision sensor. In the follow object simulating model, we can see that we're now only using the X position and the width from the detected object. We're using the X position in conjunction with the steering PID controller in order to set the turning speed of the robot so that we can aim correctly at the object we're trying to track. And we're using the width of the object as an input to our forward and backward PID controller, which is going to help us chase the object when it moves farther away from the robot. Then we're using the output from those PID controllers along with the X position and the width in order to be processed within a state flow chart that accounts for a particular width limit to set the forward and backward velocities of the robot along with the steering speeds. The output signals from the state flow chart are then connected to an arcade module, which is going to allow us to control two VEX smart motors in order to command the motion of the robot. Inside the state flow chart, we can see that we have four states. The default state is the stop state, where the forward and steering velocities are both zero. Then, we can transition to turn right, turn left, or move forward depending on the different conditions that we've set within the stateful transitions. This is going to help us account for safety and to make sure that the object is within a specific region of interest of the image. If you want more information on how to understand and design PID controllers for your robots, we're going to add a link in the description to our mobile robotics series of video tutorials. Now let's take a look at the behavior of the robot when we generate an upload code from the simulant model. Once we upload the simulant model to the robot, it will start moving and you can see that if it can detect the yellow cone, it will keep tracking it like turning left or moving forward. Or if we move the cone to the left a little more, it will move to the left again and go towards the cone. That brings us to the end of this video. I hope you find this video useful for learning how to program vision sensors or any of your robotics applications. Feel free to get in touch with us either through our Facebook group or our email address roboticsarena at mathworks.com. And make sure to check out the links in the description for more robotics content.